Eleanor Holmes Norton was first elected in 1990. The House works on seniority. She has now gotten enough seniority without a vote in committee. Well, she can vote in committee, but not on the House floor. She has enough seniority to move things that affect the city. She can give you a list of them. Why is it that the city should change horses now with someone who is serving with so much seniority and can affect what federal monies are sent here, what federal agencies stay in the town or move? I mean, this would be a, a case for her, so and she's not here to make it, so I'm trying to make it so you can answer it. Why should the city toss her out now and elect you? I mean, what is she not doing that you would do differently without the seniority? Well, I think uh, it's time for change, Tom. We've Why? had her there for 20 years, and we haven't That's, had well, any you know, movement. We, we, I've been a reporter for 45 years. Maybe there's time for change for me, but never— You're not serving the, the people. That's the, a little uh, bit yes, different. Yes, I serve the people every day as a reporter. You get, you now, get paid? Is, I get Tax paid money? By, no, no, that's a little different. Know, but a, <laughs> no, but tell me, it's, it's enough to – the fact she's there 20 years, you got to say, well, it's what's 20 she years, not doing now that you would do differently? It's 20 years with no movement on her key issue of voting rights and statehood. 20 years. So you would toss her out on, on voting rights? I mean, on vote – there's zero movement. We're in the same place that we were when she was elected 20 years ago. That is unacceptable, and I feel that she's been woefully short in terms of meeting the needs of district residents. I mean, we need someone – I plan to focus on policy issues that directly affect – DC residents in my such as and my time as an ANC commissioner, I found that we are three there are three basic issues that seem to unite the city education, health care, and job creation. So I would focus on, you know, the conventional programs like Title I and Head Start. I'm a big supporter of opportunity scholarship programs where you give uh, federal money to local public school students to attend private and schools. And she is not. And she is not. That's right. And she as has far a as I'm job fair every year. She I, does. Thousands of people come to her job fairs. She, yeah. oh. she keeps want, federal agencies. In I them. wanted to get back to the crucial question, though, here, which is, You've been working in journalism for 45 years? <laughs> 45 that years. That surprised no, me, the too. Crucial question I guess he is, started when he was like 10 or 15. The crucial or question, Doug Sloan, is that some people say this job is about one issue and one issue only, congressional voting rights for the District of Columbia. When it comes to that issue, what can you say that you would have done differently than Eleanor Holmes Norton to get a bill through the House? Well, listen, uh, I think that we need to change direction in that I think that we need to focus on statehood. Uh, I think that we have been going around on this fool's errand for congressional voting rights for 20 years. And let me tell you something. If she was unable to get voting rights with a filibuster-proof majority in both the Senate and the House, a supermajority of the Democrats in both the Senate and the House and a president that is sympathetic to voting rights, I don't think that you're going to be able to get it after that. I mean, in less favorable circumstances. I don't think that we you need to focus on that. on your website that the most recently proposed solution, a bill that would have given the city a vote in the House at the cost of stripping down its gun regulations, was a bad deal. Yes. Why? Yes, because I don't feel that we should have to compromise the safety of district residents to get that one vote. That one vote was... Uh, it was not something that would really help the District of Columbia because it did not include legislative autonomy or budget autonomy, it did not address those issues, or even judicial autonomy. It didn't address any of those three issues. It was just a vote. And on top of that, uh, it, it may not pass a constitutional muster because the Constitution says that in order to be a representative in the House of Representatives, you have to uh, be a member of the state, of a state. So that may have been How challenged.